What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the GFY Podcast. I'm co-host Alex Lewis. I'm co-host Jackson Peters Hobson. And today we are joined by Annabeth Ritter, Catherine, and Natalie. Hello. Yo. Yo. Alrighty. So, we got a few topics set up for today. Um, first of which being the resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons in the last few years. Uh, Nolly, if you would. Alright, so, um, I've joined, we started a, um, a D&D club in Shorewood recently, in like the last year, which has been getting some pretty good heat uh, recently, but I think it was last year that I ended up starting my first, like, group campaign, and it was at my friend's house, and my friend's dad, Moose, is our DM. And uh, it's been really weird because my dad played uh, Dungeons & Dragons when he was my age. And so it's been sort of a weird thing to see the reoccurrence of D&D from, like, you know, the the 80s and 90s until, like, the, the dip in the 2000s. And now that it's coming back into being really popular again. And, I don't know, I just think it's really awesome because it... Um, it's a really good platform to create character building, which I think is something that not a lot of people have focused on. So it's definitely yeah. not something that most people uh, use, I suppose. But it just it is interesting to see just how something that if you talked about it maybe five, ten years ago, it, it wouldn't have been seen as something to be proud of in most yeah, groups. Because, I mean, like, my dad talks about, you know, when he used to play it when it first came out, he still owns the original books, mind you. And, I mean, it's interesting to hear about. But when I first heard about it, it wasn't exactly, you know, groundbreaking. None of my friends played it. No one I talked to really had uh, high opinions. Um, but seeing it come back especially in today's generation and seeing a lot of mm-hmm. people concentrating on, i mean even just on the story building on the character building it's good to see yeah and it's like the sort of thing where you know it's not only do you get to bond in session with the game but there's this whole other side of you know talking to your friends about your characters creating memes about them um <laughs> The whole subreddit of like D and D memes is such a weird thing because it's like it sounds it's the, boring, so it's the few times that like the generations can get each other's jokes because when you uh, make a joke about you know a bard wanting to fuck everything that can move, I mean um, <laughs> our generation is gonna get it as they play D and D, but so is you know the past generation. Out of context, D and D memes. <laughs> Yes, um, but it's oh, it's the thing where like I have spent like the last couple, the last like two years have been, uh, um, along with being able to bond in session where we get to like play and be our characters, you get to develop and like um, stick with those characters and you know have something to talk with your friends about outside of session, and it's it's a really cool thing because you get to like develop them and and one of my favorite parts is like my friend um one of my underclassmen will be like okay how does your character mila who's this barbarian orc she's like how do you think mila would react to such and such how would she react to the concept of cats and i'm like i don't know she's like the concept six, of cats. she's like a 64 <laughs> year old like barbarian orcish woman who's lived in a turtle for the last like 20 years. I don't know if wait, knows if Catherine Wait, wait, what? Yeah, you can make the most creative backstories for the characters. Like, no one probably wouldn't care where exactly they would originate from, at least. Yeah. So you could you, you could just let loose and, um, with your crea- um, creativity, pretty much. It is one of yeah, the Yeah, and few... it's the sort of thing where, like, oh, you can be literally whoever you want to be. Yep. So, I mean, I have, I have two main characters. I have my <laughs> bardic dwarf named squee he's like four foot nine a total pussy he used to be an accountant but now he goes around with a gambling and drinking problem as he goes and fucks everything and then i have my uh barbarian who's a uh she's a mixed class barbarian ranger uh she is a full-blooded orc 
Her name is Mila Marashak. She can't read common or English in this case, and she doesn't know how to do complex math because she has an intelligence of eight. Um, but she has a strength score of, of like 20. And so if she needs to get something done, she just uses her strength. Um, but it's it's just really fun because you get that juxtaposition of, of different characters and you get to, you know, have their personality uh, be backed up by their strengths, by their, you know, their stats. And it just becomes a really fun thing to experiment with. Definitely. It does seem to be one of the last few, like, things that people get it, can get into that really does have 100%, like, creative freedom. Oh, yeah. I mean, even looking at just, like, you know, looking at art, with art styles, you fit into a specific thing, and then you, a lot of people start getting limited in it. With music, depending on what you play, you're also kind of limited in what you can do. With yeah. character creation, yeah, the it's entire universe endless. is ahead of you. And it's the thing is, it's like, not every character is going to be the same, not every campaign, not every session, and there's so many different, um, you know, possibilities and combinations. And plus, with, like, D&D Beyond, it's taken the process of, you know, creating a character sheet and doing all the math yourself, and it's streamlined it. And there, if you, you know, if you get the subscription to D&D Beyond, you get the whole option to homebrew stuff, and you can take all of the endless combinations and infinitely multiply them, because you can make your own stuff. Yeah. And that's really what D&D is. It's of the basic framework, like, the infrastructure of something like that. Not every session is going to be, you know, a dungeon crawl. Um, you're going to be fighting, you know, monsters and dragons. Sometimes you are going to be, like, in modern settings. There are literally games where you could be in cars. There are um, other role-playing games like Car Wars and and stuff like that that use a role-playing format like D&D, but they change the setting up. And it's a whole open format that's really, really great for uh, trying to channel your creativity. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know how to like bridge off. Um, <laughs> well, I'm gonna just come clean. It's interesting to listen to all this, and I understand stuff about like creative freedom and that. But mm-hmm. I have never been a Dungeon and Dragons fan. I've never hated it. Mm-hmm. I just haven't really played it. <laughs> well, I've never played it. But I mean, I, I know... appreciate for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds it sounds fun and enticing and cool. Mm-hmm. If it weren't yeah. for the fact hey. that I have so many other projects that involve making characters, I would probably fall into that. <laughs> Already for yeah, a like week. I, I didn't originally. Next meme. D and D, but Next. yeah. Oh, no one got my reference. review. But just yeah, forget review. that the true fantasy of D and D is I only a consistent group of friends to meet up with. I'm holding my phone. But uh, let's see. So oh oh, speaking of like lore and world building. <laughs> We have yes. nation states news, which doesn't apply to anyone except me, Jax, and Derek. <laughs> and I guess Robbie, if you actually decide to watch this episode, get beamed because we kind of declared war on you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so heading over to the Alkman Tribune, um, the last time that we talked about Alkman, I think, was episode 15 or 16. It's yeah. when I read off, um, what was it? Issue seven, then that on fed list. into a really intense discussion where we both were just preaching to the choir against Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did, didn't it? <laughs> Are you um, gonna address yep. that you have two episode fourteens? Um, I redid it. I redid it. If you look at the channel now, it has been changed. Everything is not staggered anymore. It is correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> two episodes. Four. So, um, shut the fuck up and never mention that again. <laughs> But, Are you um, ruining our brand? It's a little old, like now, because it's um, fucking November 24th. But it still applies because there isn't an issue after it. We have issue 8, foreign engagements, from the 17th of September 2019. Jax, should I actually read this off, or should I just give the gist of it? The gist with some reading, if that makes on, sense. So you're good either way. It's a bunch of lore. 
It, Alex, Alex, uh, it literally means do nothing. The, just with some reading. How the hell do I do that? Like, what is it about? And then read, like, one part of it. Okay. Just one part. So, <laughs> pretty much, for the first part of the story, um, we declared war on a major terrorist sect in the Minorian Krogshrek organized territory. And, um, I'll just read off... Who, who happened to blow up a college... In yeah, my, in my yeah, they blew up a college in Cascadia. Oh. Ow. Um, B big wait, ow. <laughs> I guess I should just read off Heskel Crane's speech. Er. All right. Yeah. <coughs> nice. It is in the defense of our continent, guarded by the abiding countries that have long stood as our allies, that we hereby declare war upon this newly reorganized nation of USA Minor. It is not a resistance to this is not a resistance to occupation. This is an invasion, with numbers and weapons competent enough to back it up. With our other pertaining duties on and around Alkmon and indeed the globe itself, we call upon our comrades in arms to act in unity against this threat to one of our own budding, thriving, peaceful nations. We have a duty to this continent as its guardian, its progressor, its friend, and we will not abandon it when it suits us. These are not weak adversaries. These are a well-armed, well-organized force that have needlessly struck against an unassuming, unrelated target against the wishes of the Parliament and against the wishes of the Coalition and the Imperial Government. This is not the only action pursued by these nemeses, only one of their largest. Seen before when these terrorists struck the leadership and students on our own home fronts, our own continental blood spilled. They have made themselves an enemy of Alkmon, and shall be treated as such until the last cell is brought back to its place. Our populace has, as I have observed, already come to lucid conclusion. We shall fight. Our friends in Kalapas Alik are engaged in a conflict contrary to their nature. They need not suffer more. The Minorians shall not escape any longer. We will fight them wherever they shall go. We shall fight them in the skies, on the cerulean blue, on the mountains, the hills, the streets, in the forests, towers, and homes, in the vacuum of the inky black, in the halls of scrutiny that they have so willed us to war, and, should the militants that have provoked the continent's powers rise anew in ten, a hundred, a thousand years, we will repeat this process until the voices of malicious sedition and terrorism are silent once more. It is our word, our duty, our will, that we will never relent until the world's standards of peace are again met. I call you to arms, my brothers, my sisters. The cycle of war in our world has been shattered again. The cycle of war continues unbroken. <coughs> okay, well, one, that's a good-ass roleplay speech. Uh, yeah, are you sure you've done yeah. before? Like, goddamn, I'd be shook. <laughs> good meme. Okay, two, a little bit of background context. Um, these minorian terrorists uh, a a attacked a bunch of uh, no, a, a, they blew up a dorm or two. Yeah, and then <laughs> uh, in, in my in a, in a city called Osborne in my country, Cascadia. Um, and then they reorganized and... a bunch of the old sects and put them together under a reorganized USA Minor, and then invaded Kalapas Alik, which is Connor Reed's nation. Yeah, so basically, context at least for Cascadia, I didn't want to be a part of this until we got attacked. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, uh, my we saw a rise in military funding. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, my uh, my country is very strictly pacifist. Um, and I then all of a sudden, we saw a rise in military funding. Because we were attacked, and we had to defend ourselves. Yeah. It, it says in my dispatch, it says, we take just as much pride in not going to war as we would going to it, so... And um, there's also a international response to this from the United States and Japan. There's also a large refugee situation from 42 Forever, Okawai. Um, Which makes sense because their entire nation Kalapas is a nuclear hellscape, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so there's still that situation going on. Um, Operation Hammerforge and all of this stuff has put the nation of Kriegsrecht, part of the organized territory under martial law temporarily until this situation blows over. Your name already means martial law. Yeah, okay. so martial law is under martial law. 
Um, <laughs> and of course, Cascadia, the pacifists that they are, are in complete disarray because they don't want to go to war, but they also want to go to war, so they have to figure out, are they going to war? Um, We've already figured that out. Well, no, no, we're but by, really, by the, at the really time I was writing this, at the time I was oh, writing oh. this, remember, we decided that afterwards. Yeah. Um, then we have the <laughs> the CFLC championship in Verlens is the final of the ICL champion, or the, of the CFL championships until the war ends. Because, of course, you can't have an international football league if most of the nations in the football league are at war. <laughs> it's kind of like having the Olympics in the middle of World War Two. There's a reason it didn't happen in Berlin again. Like that would be the equivalent of Israel versus Palestine World Cup. And um, Oof. a Cascadian ship was scuttled. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you sunk one of your ships so that you didn't have to give away information. Yeah, I remember that. Don't forget, you also scuttled <laughs> the CSDS Scunthorpe. Oh, I forgot. What? <laughs> um, oh, by the way, shameless advertisement. June eighteenth is Joe from Scunthorpe Day. You will not get any context for what that is or why it's celebrated, but it is on June eighteenth. I feel like Okay, um speaking I of football. I feel like the name Scunthorpe is something that would happen in like added a fever dream uh, to a sneeze. It's Britain. It it's it's, it's just Britain. Power That's power. the only context oh. you need is Scunthorpe is in Britain. Joe from Scunthorpe is an all-powerful being. That's all you need to know. Uh, let's see. Ooh, e line <laughs> stories. I don't know. Hold on. Speaking of football. Oh, hold on. well, okay. Are we really? We okay, have fine. The fucking Sounders. Yes, we have more important things to talk about. Yes. Dickhead. That's the like the fourth to last thing on the list. Fine. We'll talk about it later. No, it's but fine. Go talking. ahead now because you already have the thing and we're already talking about it. Good. So, the Seattle Sounders Football Club won the MLS Cup 2019. We beat the shit out of Toronto. Beat them 3-1. Uh, best day of my life. We almost got banned from the stadium for using smoke after we won, but that's... It's okay. Side detail. <laughs> Did you crush in someone's uh, truck? And, oh, yeah. I, I got up on a truck during the march and went crazy. Um, and as much as Go I crazy. hate to admit it... Go stupid! Toronto... As much as I hate to admit it, because Toronto is one of our rivals by this point, because we've played them in the final so many times, uh, they brought 2,000 cross-continent just to watch a game that they got smashed in, so respect. Okay, controversial opinion. I haven't cared about soccer since, like, second grade. Football. I only take take offense to that statement if you do care about sports, but not soccer. I, I... I I don't. I just. I mean, that, that, that I only care about like, me. uh, like football because my parents, uh, follow the Oregon Ducks because that's where they met. But other than that, it's just a single shit. Oh, I think now you did. Ha! <laughs> okay. Um, Eline stories. Yes. You're just salty because the fucking Huskies lost. Yeah, mildly. <laughs> Shut up. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> See, okay, care so, um, Jax, sure. Jax, same thing back to you that you said about football, about American <laughs> football. Fuck okay, off. Wait. Really quick, I remember, I, like, when I did care about college football, the Cougars weren't ranked. Are they ranked well, now? the Cougars can eat my ass, and yes, they are. <laughs> okay, well, wait, are they ranked higher than Washington? Uh, not at the moment, I don't think. Hey, never mind, because I was about to laugh really hard. But <laughs> I mean, even if they, even if they were, still eat my ass. <laughs> oh, both okay. the coop, both the Cougars and the Huskies mean. lost to the Ducks. Elon stories. So the there was Elon. a guy that got on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I was standing the at the front. The story. There was a guy that got on the bus. <laughs> I was. St- I was standing at the front <laughs> with my cello. This guy stumbles on the back, obviously did not pay, um, or did not pay, did and not obviously pay. was not also paid. completely high off his ass and drunk. Um, you could smell the whiskey from the front of the bus. Um, Oof. And then he tried sitting down on someone because apparently he didn't see him. <laughs> and then the bus driver had to get up, go to the back of the bus, 
and just push him back off the bus. Oof. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's I, a man. Uh, I was taking the E line from Seattle back to Shoreline uh, during the summer because I was doing like this. Um, this one music camp thingy, and the bus stop was kind of janky. It it was like one of those bus stops that t- like it comes it curves off from the main road, and it's it's a bus lane only. But a lot of people don't get that, and so we'd have like Audis come through and like try to drive that. The thing is, is that when you have like a several ton, uh, like. A bus stopping at a specific spot in the pavement like every 15 minutes for like 10 years the pavement gets really kind of fucked so there's bit. these giant like divots in the pavement along this entire stretch of the road right along the bus stop where uh the pavement has been moved aside and worn away by the bus tires and um this audi came up and tried to like get into the bus lane and it completely it scraped on the entire length of this road underneath the underside of this Audi and I was laughing my absolute dick off nice what the hell did I I just find Uh, some some context for if for some godforsaken reason you're not from Seattle and you're watching this um, the E-line is a bus that goes on the only major road that gives us any semblance of connection to the main city of Seattle, which is called Aurora, or Highway 99. Okay, just ignoring Lake City Way. Um, (laughs) And I-5. Oh, yeah, I-5. So, okay, one of my E-Line stories, I was on there for, uh, I was going to a Sounders match, and there was, we we were playing, I think we were playing Houston, yeah, yeah, we were playing Houston, the Houston Dynamo. (laughs) <laughs> worst MLS name, and they're also a really bad team. Th- it is a really bad team. Um, Didn't we beat them like four one? The playoffs, yeah. Yeah. So basically, this guy Alex was just explaining about like a drunk guy on the bus. This guy was like that probably times three because it's sports. <laughs> True that. And for some. He starts, like, specifically choosing the people that are not dressed in Sounders gear and, like, yelling at them for no apparent reason. Like, I, I don't even have a damn clue what he was yelling about. I just heard, because ah, mm-hmm. he was that drunk. He, like, he literally could not formulate a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> and Bye. keep in mind, this whole time, we're on 99. So, we, or, or not, not on 99. We're on, we're on the highway. We're on I-5. So the bus driver can't just stop and kick the guy off the bus. So Wait, this bus it doesn't come goes all five. What? Wait. What? <laughs> Suspicious. The E line doesn't go on I five. Wait, yes it does. <laughs> what? No. Oh. Okay, so if you that, continue down, it it just continues it's... on Highway ninety nine. No, down no, into downtown. that's the E line, but the buses itself, the red ones, what used to be known as Rapid Ride. There's different lines. There's D, uh, A, B, like well, all yeah. those ones, and those I'm... buses can go on I five. Well, yeah, no. Yeah, I'm not. just telling. I'm basically. I'm just. I'm telling a rapid ride story. Okay, because yeah. if we're talking E-line about E line, hmm. Yeah. So. No. The, so basically, keep in mind, there's like kids and stuff on this bus as well. So like, all the parents are like shielding their kids' eyes and stuff like that. That's normal. Oh. And. So we go through about 20 minutes of this guy being on the bus because, again, we're on the highway. The bus driver can't just stop and kick the guy off the bus. And when he does get kicked yeah. off the bus, man breaks a window Ooh. and then leaves. Jesus. Oh, shit. It, it, like, he, he gets That's kicked off the bus. I never mess with drunk people. Dude, yeah, crackhead energy is a whole nother, like, dimension. Okay, crackhead yeah. Crackhead. Yes. I had one he gets shoved off the bus, and he's really mad about it, and so he breaks a window, and then just stalks off. I I, I don't I think he's my, paid for this. My show. one singular most crackhead energy E-line ride was, it started at that bus stop that absolutely fucked the back, the underside of the Audi, and I was heading back to Seattle. Um, We were heading back 
this guy got on the bus and he was like delirious. He's got like a a, a brown paper bag, obviously has liquor in it, but he's like slumped over, slowly falling out of his seat. He's obviously just hammered off of his ass. Um, I like, of course, being the antisocial fucking zoomer that I am, I've got my headphones in, trying to block out the fact that anyone else exists. And so I don't really notice until we pull up to the bus stop. We're there for like a, a longer amount of time. You know when when you're on a bus stop and you're like, we've been here for like thirty seconds too long. Um, yeah, you but, start to notice. Yeah, but then we just completely stop, and then uh, this guy, uh, the the bus driver, just sort of parks the bus, and he comes through. And this drunk guy was, like, sitting in the the seats right in front of where the back entrance doors are. And I was sitting, like, in the back section in one of the, the forward-fronting, like, pair seats. And so I was just watching. And then this tiny Hispanic guy, who's the bus driver, comes up. Comes up to, like, this six-foot-four drunk, like, just half-passed-out dude grabs him by the shirt collar and almost like tosses his ass out of the bus oh. and oh, he, like, like stumbles sort of like and just sort of like puts his back to the little bus shelter thingy sits down straight up pisses himself right at the bus station and because now he's had to throw this guy out apparently um there's like a rule that they have to do a write up now and so everybody had to get off of the bus because it was going to be like 20 minutes before this guy could uh, leave and start the bus up again because he had to do paperwork. And so everybody gets off of this bus fucking angry. Um, it's like a hot summer day in Seattle. Um, well, Which that's hot as 75 degrees can be. And so we have to wait for like 20 minutes trying to stand away from this drunk guy who's pissed himself at the bus stop. Um, I finally get on another bus. Um, that's like completely empty because everybody else uh, got on the next one that came that was like already full to begin with. So I get on this nearly empty bus. I try to make my way down the rest of the way. But as we get to Green Lake, um, if you know the area around Green Lake is real fucking sketch, oh, uh, yeah. especially Definitely. there along the road. Oh, that and part. so we pull up to this thing, and I don't know what happened, but like, um, I guess a truck tried to, like, cut off the bus, but he didn't have enough time because the bus pulled off to go into one of the bus-only lanes for the bus stop, and the truck was still moving beside it as it did that, and so they went from, like, a two-lane system to a one-lane, and so as we're pulling into this bus stop, we end up wedging ourselves between the bus, the curb, and this truck. And so eventually we just almost ended up running the truck onto the, uh, up the curb. And so this is now the second time that we've had to stop the bus. The bus driver gets out and like, I see him come around. He has to do paperwork with this fucking guy who's like scratched up the side of the bus. And it's just like 20 minutes have gone by and I'm like, what? How? There's so much crackhead, er crackhead energy in this one bus. So eventually we end up getting off, but like those three incidents just culminated in the strangest and longest bus ride like ever. That sounds yeah, like my stories can't top that because most of the things that's happened to me hasn't happened on the E line bus. So just tell a bus story then, whatever. Yeah, if you got any bus stories, those can just only the ones that I've remembered are like um pretty close close calls every single time when riding on like the community transit bus and the and the swift bus oh my god swift bus fucking swift oh. is cursed I took honestly swift yeah to to that's why i never I take it really a lot um, unless if anything, i'm like on my way to shoreline any f any buses that go to fucking like edmonds no the first Wait, time no, i edmonds, ever took like... the swift on friday afternoon to go to popeyes with Derek and Annabeth and the whole entire crew. <laughs> um, oh, we <laughs> we found a bloody Bible on the ground. Jesus. What? And apparently the next Wait. day when Derek was riding the Swift, there was an entire drug bust. Yeah, oh, that was uh, yesterday. 
Wait, when did you join? Oh, hi. Hi, Derek. What? Just now. Derek. Oh. oh. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? This is the DFY podcast. Hey, I am Derek. another one of the co-hosts. Yes, my name is Derek. He's the photographer. Are you actually going to be here, or are you dipping in yeah, a few minutes? Here. I'm dipping in about 30 seconds. Okay. Okay, wait. Say your piece now. Give us a bus story in 30 seconds. Give please. us a bus story. Okay, once upon a time, there was someone masturbating in the back of an E-Line bus, uh, and okay. it was bad. That's normal. That's not See, even that yeah. bad. That's just a normal day on the E-Line. Um... <laughs> It's once always upon a time, on the line. Once upon like... a time, I saw a a drug bust, which happened a few de- or happened yesterday. Yeah, I was gonna say and... that was yesterday. Yeah. Um. Once upon a time, I died. The end. Nice. Bye, Derek. <laughs> I once put my hands up on the back of the seats, and my hand, like my fingers, touched something, and I realized it was a full ass dirty diaper. Oh. Oh. So, well, great. Like, shit. I feel like the further north you go, and, and not to say Seattle doesn't have crackhead energy either. But Everett like has crackhead energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially when we were there's there. Some, some no, but also, especially before it's redevelopment. There's a little bit of sketch in Marysville, too, to be honest. A little bit of sketch. But, but like, there's I'm going to, to Marysville there's tomorrow. There's nothing to do in Marysville other than drugs. They actually have gotten better. There is a, there is some pretty good food up there now, but yeah, there's still isn't really much to do they, except yeah, for I'm food. Going yeah, except for food. It, also, they have a Dutch Bros and we don't, everything. so, you know. This is what Marysville and Muckleteo have going for it. Ivers. Crabbing, drugs, end of story. They also have cheesecake. <laughs> yeah. And story, donuts. Yeah, and donuts. I mean, don't donuts. You, love... you can, like, do it at Costco. <laughs> okay, so Derek, when you oh, up eat in my an ass. Bathroom and go Good morning, burger. Good <laughs> morning, <laughs> Vietnam! I fucking what? love that meme. <laughs> Sergeant, whatever. Did you or did you not marry my dog? And did you or did you not? No, it's eat my dog, my dog and marry my ma- marry my mom. Marry my dog? That's what I marry heard. No, <laughs> it's cons- it's eat. Cons- I need some dog. artillery up in here. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh my that god! That TikTok like radiates so much energy. It's so good. Yeah. It's so well I made. Love it. I love it. Uh, let's see here. Politics. Uh, okay. Y'all got any good good old politics? No, 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 no. I got the best one. I got the best one. How Dutch Gouda is made at a hundred-year-old family farm. All right, yeah, it's time for you to leave. Man, wait. All right. (laughs) So, now that we are uh, clear of Derek, let's talk about... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> let's talk about some politics oh, yeah Hi. mr donald dramp um donald tried to, dramp tried to get some dirt on an opponent in ukraine ukraine said uh yeah fuck that and and see? trump got caught for it and now he's getting impeached Beans. for it. he's getting beans Did you see not, his, not, uh... not out of office but... Okay, by far, that was the dumbest thing that just happened. I disconnected as soon as I said that. Oh, no, you <laughs> dickhead, I oh, kicked okay. you! Oh, no, okay, Did never you mind. see his notes uh, that he had for uh, the, the press appearance? I did not. Oh, okay, I so did. He, I, I saw it. He had, uh, like, a, a couple pages of notes that he was reading to the press after the um, his impeachment hearings that he was responding with. And in it, he misspells quid pro quo. And he misspells... How? That's literally uh, like, you sound it out. And he, he misspells Sondland and he misspells uh, the president of Ukraine's name, which I can't remember. Zelensky? Oh, yeah, that's not even that hard to spell. Still. I could spell that well, off the top of my head. I, I don't even know who we're talking about. We're all top like, class businessmen right here, right? E L E N S K Y. Derek, we're talking about the fact that Donald Trump is an idiot, basically. Oh, he, no, that was he a is an idiot. He always will be, and he needs he needs to get out of office. But like literally, until all of this stuff goes over, and until we have like a specific, definite like outcome. There's not actually that much you can talk about with the impeachment hearing. Like, they're actually, like, 
there's all of the new developments and stuff, but when you put it all together and when you think about them individually, they don't actually mean that much. So until, like, it all goes through, it almost seems like a moot point. And the thing is, what it's is there like, to talk about? And the thing is, uh, again, bringing back to the same thing, what's there to talk about? Because not, he's not going to get impeached anyway. This is all just for not. <laughs> It's just well. Also, I I was watching the the first impeachment hearing, um, <laughs> or the first public one, uh, mm -hmm. and it was just one of those things where once you get past the first ten minutes, you can definitely tell it's just going to be another hour and a half of a bunch of politicians talking their heads off, trying to waste time. Because most of the major stuff that actually will get done, that'll actually get things moving, is not going to be the stuff that they're going to talk about in public. It's going to be the stuff behind closed doors. Yeah. There's nothing that's going to happen the, on a public here's hearing the thing, that really though, is, is going to things on. Here's the thing, though. The only thing that makes... One thing to understand, it's only a public hearing because Republicans bitched about it being behind closed doors. Oh, yeah. They came and like, oh, this is going to be like a secret hearing. We want it out in public even but though that's uh, what they did public. with uh clinton <clears throat> yeah and yep, now exactly. that it is out the in public point. all the republicans are bitching about it being like this should be behind closed doors um i i see where you're coming but i also think that a lot of uh the result of what will happen uh for the impeachment hearing um, relies on public opinion True. and if public opinion you know, reflects, oh, we're kind of jaded and don't care about this, and this doesn't matter, then it won't matter. Um, so, I don't know. I well, think a I, I lot think, of this oh, stuff sorry. Yeah, is perception important, reality. but, yeah. I think a lot of it also depends on the sources of information in the whistleblower, because, of course, we don't know the identities of the several whistleblowers that have came out. And so most of the information that actually drives things along will be coming from them. And we don't even know who they are, so we don't know, like, their credibility. Well, their, their entire thing is inherently closed door, because we can't know who they are without jeopardizing yeah. everything. Yeah. Oh, even if he really desperately see, wants to know who it is. But, uh, going into and, more... And Oh, yeah. sorry. No, go go ahead. Go ahead. The the I'll whole you know um, all of the attention being brought to who the uh, whistleblower is. If anything, I think it's another Republican cop out because they're like, don't pay attention to what the the whistleblower said or what they heard. Let's yeah, they're figure just out paying who attention to identity. Is. So yeah, which is just once again another way to waste time and bring about another wild goose chase that won't lead anywhere. No. That's what because we've been the identity doing the of the person... Like, like, the only thing that matters within this situation is their credentials. Are they actually a valid source? Other than that, their identity does not matter. Yeah, and it's been proven that they are a... Um, They're a White House you know, aide. That they have access to all this information and so far have been quite credible and realistic with their claims. Yeah, it... it they're yeah. It's just some some stupid shit. Just I think the part that makes that. Yeah, the part that makes all this this whole situation so frustrating is that he's not gonna get run into office. Yeah. Like yeah. this is we're spending all this energy trying to get someone out of office who's not leaving until possibly twenty twenty. Yeah. Well, it's but also all of this of, is for not. It's there is you know the the one purpose of let's impeach the president, but there's also the purpose of um, if this kind of has to set a precedent because if on the one hand, we we might be wasting time by going through this because, you know, the Republicans still hold the Senate they're not going to impeach him yeah. he'll but get impeached, he'll get removed you know, set it right now that that behavior is not okay from a president mm -hmm. I mean, what pre what precedent is that going to set for the coming years that you can, you know, use your political power to get dirt on your opponent? You can use yes. your power as a president to manipulate people like it might be frustrating and take time now. And it might not, you know, be what we want it to be when it comes to getting him out of office. But it's so important 
to the fact of holding up our democracy that we don't let this blow over and let him get away with it. Agreed. Even if it doesn't mean getting him out of office, it's still illegal. I mean, even... I mean, even... Okay, in, in my opinion, I mean, I don't even really... Obviously, I don't agree with anything, essentially anything that he says, but at this point, with us being so close to the 2020 election, I don't even really want to see him removed from office. It would just be expense and a lot of... I want to see him assassinated. For the, okay, dude. <laughs> oh, but, okay, but, we don't want to say stuff like that, that he want, that we, we would want him to burn and die or get assassinated like that, like what happened at JFK. But, like, essentially, um, at this point, it's just a lot of the stuff that is happening and the meaning behind it it's not it's the it's not the action it's the principle behind it us beginning the impeachment inquiry sets the stage and sets the i i guess yes the precedent for why are we doing this yeah and so like l it's it's more just to understand the reasoning behind it which is important that this isn't unless, okay yeah unless concrete like totally undeniable evidence comes out that you know he's totally guilty of doing something illegal which by the way already has um it, he's not gonna get removed from office mm -hmm. so we we need to like it's good that we're doing this impeachment here because, just endure you know, to november but the thing is is that it <sighs> There's a lot he can do in that one year. Oh, most definitely. That, How yeah. much he's done in three years. Yeah, like, exactly. And it's oh, the point of, if this, I think this impeachment hearing, if not for having, okay, maybe the, maybe our end goal is not to maybe get him impeached, but our end goal should be that this is a message to the president and to his lackeys that he doesn't have a Republican base anymore. Mm -hmm. He cannot it. get away with everything. The there fact... has to be checks and balances. Well, also, even just the fact that there is, or I think it's now two more um, Republican candidates for president in 2020 just says it all. Because originally yeah. he was unopposed, and now all of a sudden there are two people who just said, fuck it, I'm running for president. Yeah, in general, that like that's a new thing. Because it's like, when... General, when you have a president um, who is running for re-election, people from their party won't run against them. Yeah, because usually that means there is unanimous support. Like when yeah, Obama ran not. for president in uh, mm -hmm. again in 2012, I mean, He's there sprinting. wasn't much competition. I mean, yeah, I think no. there was like two or three candidates, but they all dropped out real easy. It was like... Uh -huh. Yeah, and then uh, obviously on the Republican yeah. side, there was a lot of op opposition. Well, a ton. They really it, but, I mean, necessarily just credit, because but... of values, there there is going to be opposition. But it made sense. Mm -hmm. Here, we can uh, see there is a discrepancy here. There are people that fall out with his views, which means that the views of the popular GOP, apparently, according to Trump, is not the same as the ones that others are viewing. Which, for a party, from a party standpoint, considering they're supposed to be following the same guidelines and basis of beliefs, mm -hmm. that's not good. Yeah. yeah. And it's you... it's like that separation between the Republican base, as in the, the American people, and, you know, the Republican politicians who have motives like campaign funding and motives that are outside of the interest of the American people. Yes. Uh, something I find really interesting. Alex, are you, like, recording your screen right now, or is this just audio? Uh, I just have the, uh, uh general host's chat open. Or could you possibly record your screen? I mean, I am recording my screen. He is recording his screen. Okay. So, it's, kind of, it's only on general host. Look up, look up, uh, Alex, you've probably seen this before, but look up the Political Compass 2020 presidential candidate. Like, candidate. Derek, we don't need to hear about cock and ball torture. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Alright, so what am I looking for? Political Compass presidential candidates. I know, what am I looking for? Like, I have it open. So, there's a, there's like a graph of 
the political how, how do I say it like it's a it's a four it's a y x axis graph of like libertarian uh authoritarian oh. axis and left and or, or not what is it what authoritarian libertarian again? libertarian left and right yeah so if you actually place a bunch of the Democrats on that map, almost all of them lean towards the right side right. of that graph. Oh, I see. Most of them fall onto the authoritarian right side, at least the center yeah. of that. The only the th oh, even, that even falls, Bernie and Warren, the, the three even that Bernie and Warren are like near the center. Well, yeah, Warren is barely into the right side, and Sanders is barely into the left. Like, Although I I, I must say I do stuff. somewhat disagree with this. No. So. Okay. Here, here's a question. Um, do you think it's a good thing or a, a bad thing that Joe Biden is running for? I don't see it as okay. a very good thing, but I mean, yeah, I respect I respect him running for president. That does not mean I at all agree with him. No. Also, he tends to shoot himself in the foot when it comes to, like, Very much existing so. as a person that is electable. Also, is Jay Inslee still running? Or did he drop uh, out? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, it's not like... If, I mean, if I oh, could... We got some more news, too. Michael Bloomberg is officially announcing that he's running for the Democratic yeah, yeah. nomination for president uh, as well. Billionaire Bloomberg. Is Michael Bloomberg. He's the billionaire. Eight. Bloomberg. The, yeah, the, there's literally the several only, the billionaires. Only... What is he known for? That's it. Bloomberg. As Bloomberg. in, he he's the rich guy running for the Democratic Party. He just came in out of nowhere and said he's running. Oh, that one. Right, hey, right, hey, right. Think... So, like, like Trump, but, you know, not, but, you know. He's you know. Just Didn't sort he of literally there. say he's, he was literally like, uh, if you can't get Trump out of the office, then I'm going to buy him out of office. And then Bernie's exactly. like, yo. We don't want another billionaire buying out our elections. Although no I must you. say, even if I don't agree with it, that is a pretty good line. Yeah. But, yeah. but like... But, like, don't actually run. Yeah, like, don't. Get out. Don't. I heard someone talking... Don't just buy him. him. Like, I heard someone talking about that and say, like, oh, how ironic, a, a, a Democrat that's a billionaire. I'm like, are... You... Um... <laughs> Fuck. Uh, yeah, it... Um, newsflash... It doesn't matter if you're left or right. If you're in politics in America, you're probably rich as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. Which is unfortunate considering the actual basis of our democracy. Welcome to capitalism. It's supposed to be anyone. And the only one who really seems to come from the anyone is Sanders. And Even Sanders has a little bit more money than most people. Yeah. He's and I still... love Sanders. I mean, one of them that I the suppose Sanders also makes... falls into that lower tier, which is nice to see, is Yang. Join the Yang gang. Single mm -hmm. pro prototype made from ME two sixty two A burn number one seven zero 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 seven four of rocket based boosted interceptor. Himmelschlutzer two with BMW zero zero three R combined power plants, BMW zero zero three turbojet and a single nine point eight kilonewton thrust BMW one oh nine seven one eight liquid fueled rocket engine mounted atop the rear of each just exhaust for boosted thrust only flown once combined what the with jet and rocket power. He's in talking March about the ME two six two with rocket boosters. You done there? Am, Derek, what context confused. does this have? Yeah. Rocket sled. Are you playing War Thunder? <laughs> Incorrect. False. I mean, peasant. I play War Thunder, but I'm but I'm recording, so I can't. I'm just kidding. Single playing prototype made from ME two sixty two Mert work number one three zero dot one. Reading it again. All right. Of rocket based reproducer. The Hermish one. Cease and desist. Okay, so world oh, news. What? Next meme. So world news. Um, the world is once again fucked. Um, yeah. So, Feels like we say that every podcast. Well, yeah, or... because it it gets Isn't truer it and fun? truer each That's podcast. But um, so first topic is uh Brexit. Brexit is just a complete mess. Uh, how's Boris Johnson doing? <sighs> fuck all. <laughs> He's just sort of been there. 
He's not doing anything. He said that he would have Brexit, like when he was first put into office, he said he would have Brexit done by the end of the year. It is November. <laughs> it is <laughs> mi like mid to late November, and we have not seen a smidge of actual progress towards a okay. deal with the EU. And that's not good because British economy, European economy, the people living there, the in like the continuance of promises. Britain, mm -hmm. it's not good for any Brexit is honestly like British people were laughing at us for like how ridiculous the political situation in America is, and now, and now we just get to laugh at each other. Now we just get to laugh at each other. See. Like, I understand, like, I, I don't agree with it at all, but I understand the principle of why they began Brexit. I understand it. But it's devolved and become so convoluted that I don't even think the original view of why it's being done is there. They're and just the it because they started it. Unveils his manifesto for Brexit Britain. Uh oh. And a, a lot of why Brexit even came to be is a lack of an educated public when it came to the actual fact. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of the coverage that, like, the British people was like, yeah, when the when the thing came around, I didn't really know what it was. Like, still don't kind of understand it. And it kind of <laughs> reminds me of, like, the local election we had recently. <coughs> Looking at you, 976. Yeah, <laughs> was, that the, was that the one where it was like, um, there, I saw these one signs that says, we want, um, we want schools, not pools. And it's dumb because, like, the whole measure to get this this new, uh, like, swimming and um, pool rec center is not attached to school funding at all. It's not. And so... It comes and, from a completely yeah, separate sector of, of school yeah. funding. And yeah, and the fact that they were connecting that was so false. It made people think, like, oh, well, if I support this, then it's not going to support school funding, which is absolutely false. Yeah, and it's like with with Brexit, it. I mean, if they if they go through with a No Deal Brexit, that's like oh, it would be catastrophic. That's just gonna launch not just you Britain, not just the all. US, not just Europe. That's just gonna launch the entire Western world into a frenzy because, like, Britain is such an integral part of Europe and the EU well, okay. that to have it just yeet see, out of there. See, the thing is, is that they're an integral part of Europe, but by this point, by 2019. They have fallen on the, on the wayside. Them leaving well, yeah. wouldn't be particularly catastrophic to the EU. The only thing it would hurt now with a no-deal Brexit is themselves. They would well, crash yeah, their economy. Well, yeah, and also Scotland yeah. and, you At know... At this point, the EU is just like, okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, that would also probably completely start up Scottish independence. Okay, again. okay. So, oh, yeah, that's so right. I almost forgot. Stuff. Scotland and all, Scotland is almost like unanimously. Well, remember they narrowly missed the vote Brexit. back in like 2015. Yeah. So with this, if they actually went through with a No Deal Brexit, you'd also probably see Welsh. <laughs> Not gonna lie, also them, the them and their sheep. <clears throat> Boris Johnson oh. promises Brexit vote by Christmas as con con conservatives launch manifesto. Speaking of Europe and something. <laughs> Kind of more on the positive side, um, Finland made their first ever Euros tournament, which is like a, a World Cup, but it's just based in Europe. Cool. Um, Finland made it for the first time. <laughs> uh, what else? Brexit really, um, Brexit really just sounds like you know a kind of food, like breakfast, but like it's good. Bad. Well, the funny bit is, it started out as like a colloquial nickname, and then politicians started adopting it. Um, I feel like that's how memes die. Yeah. Colloquial, oh. nick <laughs> colloquial nicknames and then, like, boomers adopt shit. It stopped becoming it funny, it. and then it became serious. Yeah. Oh. Um, let's see. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So, Hong Kong. They're Ooh. still Ooh. on fire. The protests have not ceased, even though it has fallen out of the very short American media attention span. Um, mm -hmm. They had a recent Hong Kong poll with the like general general um, citizens, and they have made extraordinary um, pushes towards pro democracy. Like their percentages for the amount of people wanting a democracy in Hong Kong has just skyrocketed 
since the protests mm -hmm. began. So we might actually see some progress in the next weeks, months, even years. Hopefully. Yeah, it's only, star and actors too far from from dead. That being said, the, ch the thousands of Chinese soldiers being sent to the border of Hong Kong tell another story. And it's the uh, thing uh, where, like, even even with the instatement of democracy, when 2040 comes around, you know, the... The whole process is just going to repeat itself. Like... Because China... Because China... mainland China regains control of Hong Kong in 2040. Wait, what? Wait, what? What? Uh, what happened with they the do. Hong Kong? Yeah, okay. Because they regained so... it from Britain in 97, obviously. Yeah, but... But what's the, the story in 2040? The of Hong Kong, that section, is separated from man uh, mainland China. Yeah, they're their own independent political state. And so there was state. an agreement when it was taken from Britain that it would rule under a separate... Uh, and don't quote me on this, because I don't know all the facts. Yeah. But, um... Rule under democracy for about a hundred years until, uh, and when that hundred years comes up, then mainland China can um, take back control of Hong Kong. Legally, and so that's why you see a distinct difference between the democracy in Hong Kong and of mainland China. Well, yes, and that does speak to some measures because if they do declare full independence, does that render it null and void? So. I don't and, think mainland China well, would think of that. Exactly, exactly, because that's because that's, that's the same Let's thing with the... Taiwan. Remember, they're an independent state, but to China, all of the treaties and and claims and ownership that they have are still valid within mainland China, right? According to them, uh, and like, I think personally, same, same with... I think if Hong Kong, oh, sorry, if Hong Kong like declares independence, that is like bumping our. How many minutes away from midnight are we again? I don't know. Isn't it two? Let me let me check it. Pretty damn close. Yeah, I, I, if Hong Kong declares independence, that's bumping it up wildly because China will take military action if they declare independence. Hong Kong will definitely take like definitely take military action in the form of like rebellion if currently, they declare independence. Currently, we are two minutes from and, midnight. Yeah, Still. and those parties take military action people are going to want to join in and help out russia's going to want to help china we're going to want to help the u.s what does russia versus usa armed conflict mean Death. Death. So, i mean don't Hong forget we've already entered into the second cold war that would just mean the yeah. escalation of it we would start seeing a lot of <laughs> events similar to the cuban missile crisis again well I mean, again <laughs> yeah see. so we have about yeah, according to the Bolton of Atomic Scientists, we're still at that severe risk. That's what I was, that's what I was just um, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're going to be they're going to be revising that in like in a few months too. It'll just be higher. <laughs> They'll probably put it in it's lower than half. Been. Oh yeah, definitely. That's going to be the lowest it's ever been. Like, because mm -hmm. two minutes, I think, right now is the is the lowest it. It like it ties with like nineteen sixty nine, sixty something, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, when right. The cold when war really was launch, ramping yeah. up. But we've really reached that point where if things don't start turning around and if people don't start listening, there may be some oh. extraordinary ramifications. There was an interview <coughs> with former Soviet leader. Mikhail Gorbachev that BBC did and it was just very interesting to watch because he the person who ended the USSR and ended the Cold War is extraordinarily worried and it's not good if you get a former <laughs> Soviet leader worried about the world okay Here's it's not good if you get a former up. Soviet leader worried about the general safety of the world okay here's something crazy to think about in 1953, the U.S. tested its first hydrogen bomb in the in during November. Mm -hmm. At that point, the doomsday clock was set at two minutes. Right now, in 2018, two we minutes. are at 19. 2019. I so think someone's a year behind. 
Oh, damn. Yep. <laughs> we are at the exact same minute on the clock. Yeah, speaking of nuclear weapons, uh, doesn't Trump want to, like, increase our nuclear, like... See, the thing is, is that uh, he can say that all he wants, but the SALT 2 treaty still applies. Yeah. We and can't like, do that do without you remember, escalating anything. I think it was I think it was 2017 or 2018. He gave, he went on that whole tangent about how well if we can't defend Japan, maybe they should just have nukes. <laughs> and then you realize the fact that there are several world post World War II treaties that would say hell no to that. Yeah. Even if they are far beyond the point of being an enemy. Like at this point, I. I at least from my perspective, I do feel that it is quite all right to give Japan back its Japan back its full military rights. Oh yeah, that th we can trust them now. Yes, <laughs> I mean similar with the Germans, except they don't have nearly as many restrictions. I don't think anymore. And like you, know, something weird is that technically, if Russia and Japan started fighting each other right now, no one could do a thing because they're technically still at they're war. They're still at they war. Never... They never try. They never signed a formal peace treaty. Mm -hmm. they, Japan only surrendered to us. They never surrendered to Russia. But Russia was just like, well, they surrendered, so we'll stop. Yeah. The somehow. only re the only real thing that you can see still remains from World War II is the fact that Russia controls Sakhalin, not Japan. Yeah. But um, another world topic, once again depressing. Um, China's brainwashing of captured Uyghur Muslims has oh, been revealed once again. Um, yeah, you know there's a problem if we have to say brainwashing of a minority group has been revealed again. Like, Well, because, there's a as you know, with most world media, especially the United States, our media does not focus on a subject, no matter how bad, for much long, or for, for very long. I mean, yeah. we talked about Hong Kong for what, maybe two and a half weeks? It's still going. You know what's yeah, also people still that going? Are still talking about the Uyghurs in Hong Kong is like Vox and No, no, shit. but Jax, y you know what's still going that no one is talking about? The Yellow Global Jacket warming? protests. That's been oh. going on for a year. Yeah, exactly. Paris is in still France. on fire. Yeah, Paris has been on fire. <laughs> Wait, what Yellow Jacket thing? Um, Trump the to Paris French agreement. government put up a tax for fuel that raised the fuel price by at least equivalent in US dollars, I think by three or four dollars per oh, gallon. Oh, the yellow tank. I thought you were talking about the bees. No, like, no. Oh. Yeah, no, we're talking, like, Paris oh, is no. still burning. France is right, 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 right. in yeah, complete disarray. That. Um, but I thought you were talking about like oh yeah no ah uh, yes the bee movie has like, become yeah, reality the bees are protesting us dun, the bee dun, movie dun. became reality just, yeah. I'd be pretty scared yeah we should just grind up a bunch of bees and turn them into biofuel um there was another recent poll in <laughs> Spain as uh, Catalan independence has become a subject once again and the uh, leader who is currently living abroad I'm forgetting where has expressed his um, opinions on it so Catalan independence might be once again a topic on world news ballistic oh, missile launch even oh, yeah. though um, most of their major leaders were jailed like I think last month and like something I uh, would like to highlight that's a little more positive despite the fact that it's still an independence movement is that um i'm sure you all know what fc barcelona is it's like the big one of the biggest football clubs in the world mm -hmm. that is the only way that catalan people can express their national identity without being arrested mm -hmm. by this point yep like the 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 football club barcelona is the only place where people can wave catalan flags because barcelona's colors are a catalan <laughs> it's it's the only safe haven that anyone from Catalonia has if they want to talk or demonstrate about Catalonia unless they feel like getting arrested. Damn. So I think, yeah, so it's it's something cool about, like, football in general. Like, football made Russia into a country where people could actually go to and, like, tour it without risk of being hurt. 
in the World Cup, like that was actually a fairly successful World Cup. Everyone thought it was going to go terribly because it was in Russia. Th- this next one's going to go terribly because it's in Qatar, but like that's a whole nother story. Yeah. Oh, they, I got they a have story. so many problems Kampa. to figure out. Kappa. Let's talk about Kappa. Oh. I haven't I, I, I haven't read into that. Guys. Yes. Um so you you know like the whole um the the meme of Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself that meme has been going around. Yeah. No, I he's wanted dead. to think what you guys thought of the context of that. Cuz it's one to be it's one thing to like joke about that, but it's another reason it's another thing to realize like why do why do people think that? Wait, what was the meme that you were mentioning? Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Killed himself. Killed himself. Yeah. Um, I, I swear to God, Derek just said Derek, he's not dead. <laughs> no, he's dead. But I personally don't have much opinion on it. I didn't really even read much into the entire thing, but... Kappa? I don't know. Kappa. Because my understanding is... If if I also not entirely, do. my understanding was the theory is that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself; that in fact he was murdered um, because people were um, because the thought was that he was going to spill um, the beans about a deeply ingrained and secretive ring of pedophiles in um, in Hollywood and in political sphere and he was killed to cover that up well it doesn't seem too, all too far-fetched considering because some he historical was probably events. Cause, yeah because because he was also you know he was caught well yeah but like it, it just considering the world and how fucked up it is that doesn't actually seem all that far-fetched uh, oh here's another yeah, conspiracy I mean, there's also that... prince andrew Here's another conspiracy theory that I'd like to get your guys' opinion on. Mm. Um, people think there was either more than one Las Vegas shooting, or it was orchestrated by the government itself. Wait, Las okay, Vegas or, or like more than one shooter. Really fucked up if it was actually um, orchestrated by the government. To be fair. Wait, which this ain't the purge though. This is such a uniquely American thing, but which Los Angeles? Shooting? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> No, not yeah, Los Angeles. Los, Las Vegas. Yeah, which one? Las Vegas. Oh, oh that. One, the one? one last year. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. One. And, um, like the evidence that people point to is that one, the gunfire, because they said that the guy was firing from an AR-15, the guy that was up in the window. Um, the gunfire when military, like former veterans, listened to it, they said, "No, that's an MG or that's an M249. What what's the main machine M249. gun?" Yeah, M249. So veterans or like current U.S. military personnel looked at that video and said, that's not an AR, that's an M249, which is the standard machine gun of the American military. Um, and there was like clearly more than one gun firing during that video because the gunfire was overlapping. And so people think that it was there was either more than one shooter that people didn't realize was there or that it was actually orchestrated by the government for reasons unknown. Well, I mean, there's also okay, just, like, thoughts. echoing. That could be, like, a lot of acoustics and secondary Yeah, considering it, wasn't, it was a music performance. Yeah, but the firing was coming from the MGM Grand Hotel, not... Well, yes, but where is the gun was... facing? Are you guys talking about the, the shooting that happened at the country? Is it festival? Yes. That no, one. we're talking oh, yeah, about, one. like, the one that was in Vegas. Right. Derek, that is, the... that is in Vegas. <laughs> okay, never mind. That was in Vegas. Either way, there was um, yeah. So Jax is right when he says that because that would um, it would match the same pattern. But the thing is, is that you would get multiple reflections coming off of that because first of all, you're in a giant space, and with a shockwave of a machine or of a of an AR, there there is like about. There's another hotel right next to it, which doubles the uh, doubles the frequencies already. So you already have two shot, or you have it mimicking two shots. Okay, that frequency bounces off another um, off the building again, multiplying it even further. That's the reason why people would think that. That and there's also distance between that, and it's a shock wave. 
so the microphone can pick up multiple reflections of that and they would still be traveling within the same distance and that would be well, the reason why you would hear that i think like good job disproving that by the way Derek, because that could actually be you know what happened but i mean i think I mean, also, other also evidence just... that people are pointing to is that um the reason the government says that the guy the guy that shot up the place was using an ar-15 is because when the police searched the room that the firing was coming from there was an ar-15 in there but in the u.s military that listened and saw that video said that's definitely not an ar-15 that's an mg-49 so some so mg-49 that's a is that a german mg-40 what is it God damn. m249 it's fine m249, m249. so people th so what pe some people think is that the government like planted that ar-15 in that room mm -hmm. and then had someone else do it again opinions well I i'm just the, the, the one thing is, the is that here. for the most part that wouldn't make much sense in general yeah, um, just because yeah, it's a music <clears throat> performance and even if this was some like s outlandish super spy bullshit, Am I they the would only do one it having quietly. connection issues? Um, depends. It probably is your connection. Um, yeah. Let's see here, what Oops. you got for me, VBC? <laughs> Plane crashed. Great. Oh wait, a plane crash? What was yeah. that? What's that all about? Uh, Artificial diseases. Um, oh. a small plane crashed into the Democrat uh, in. I can't even speak. A small Trump plane has crashed into houses in the city of Goma in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. That's a problem. Um, oh, oh, that's not small. That's a. Do two twenty eight. Oh shit! Hey, let me look this up. Spinning now. three times in the air and emitting a lot of smoke. I... Engine failure is what sources are saying. Right after takeoff. Oh. Donald Trump looks. Donald Trump's signature looks like a bunch of mountains. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'm at serious. least. So, Congo plane crashes into homes in African town, leaving at least 25 dead. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also, Bolivia Bolivia is in complete political unrest right now. We really need another South American country having a political crisis yeah. right now. And why Bolivia? <laughs> of all places, Bolivia is wholesome. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe it's not completely wholesome, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's a nice place. Why, why, why... <laughs> But, yeah. Alright, who wants to send Trump or um, get Trump's signature? That's a signature. I don't want that signature. is the worst signature, by the way. <sighs> oh. Why does so it Trump's... It does look like a book. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Why does Trump's yearbook photo have medals? Why does it look like he's like in the military or something? What the fuck? Uh, just Didn't Vietnam he have bone with a bone spur. Colombia <laughs> is also in some unrest. Or unrest. Well, how many South American countries does that make it? A few. All of them. Also, the Amazon is still burning. The Amazon is, yep, yep, yep. still burning. No one's talking about it then anymore. The in the US. Don't really know what's the whole point of planting 20 million trees, but uh, I mean, to make up for all the burning trees in the Amazon, all right. Uh, I mean, South it's better Korea, than doing nothing. South Korea True. and Japan True. have broken a lot of ties for Hashtag several different trees. reasons. Um, I love how the, uh, the sound of the microwave <laughs> going off. Yum, yum. You're exciting. I'm warming up my taquitos. Oh, there are even <laughs> more teams. No, it has to, has to be Tostitos right there. Hey, I, Alex, get, I, I always get it wrong. Oh, yeah. Alex. Yeah? Next year in MLS, there, Miami and Nashville are getting teams. Cool. 
<laughs> we need more teams in the MLS. <laughs> What's MLS? I'm sorry. Major League, League Soccer. Soccer. Also, oh. um, Australia is on fire. Oh. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Yeah, and there's wildfires in Australia. The yeah. thing is, is that Damn they're running it. out of water. <laughs> and that's really um, bad for a country of and like millions. The people. thing is, is that this might be the first time in several hundred years that a wildfire may actually reach and threaten and overcome large parts of urban space because it's coming over to Sydney. What about Atlanta? Um, or not at LA. Oh shit, they're fucked. Maybe. Isn't there wildfires that reached LA though? Yeah. Well, yes, or but that's that was their suburbs. But this might actually reach like metropolitan Sydney. Oh shit. But that's a problem. <laughs> yes, it would. Well, I mean, I don't. Out of all the damage it could do, you have to consider. You know, concrete and steel isn't particularly flammable. Like, well, okay, I, 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 I more mean the actual ramifications of it. The fact that this was able to happen in the first place. That's true. Because they haven't, they, they see a lot of wildfires, very large ones. This is one of the largest. Australians are literally known for dealing with crazy shit, and they're saying that this is really bad. But so it's probably the fact pretty that this bad. falls into line with several other climate events in the last few years. I do believe we're well past Lickety the dick. point Where of coincidence. Is my bottle opener. Yeah. Lickety dick. Lickety dick. Lickety dick. What? I'm what? trying to find my fucking bottle opener. I'm trying to get crunk. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I heard something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was an attack on a Syrian <laughs> camp. Oh, oh no, wait. My God, oh, that is a lot of. There's those. a topic that I totally Turkey. forgot. Turkey invaded Syria. Mm -hmm. What? Like, well, don't forget that we mind. abandoned the Kurds. Yeah, we abandoned the Kurds. We just said um, and, and walked Kurds. away. <laughs> All right. By the way, Trump, the art of we're, the we're abandoned. Trump so if you, if you have no context to that, the, art of the, the Kurds were like the main force in northern Syria that helped us defeat ISIS and conquer their capital. Yeah, the, basically the main also, military. Don't forget, force. a lot of our aggression over there is still about oil. Mm -hmm. Speeches, Hi. the inaugural address, the joint session of Congress, also Rida Sarp summit. Um, Israeli speech. Prime Minister Netanyahu is being charged with corruption. Oh, great. Oh. Which means Israel might actually see some political upheaval. Which oh, is fine by the way. have enough of that already. I mean, I'm all for it. Netanyahu's a dick. Yes, more. Another. Um, can we please. Called? Can we please another just get a moderate Israeli in power? Please, oh my god. With it the oil so there? That might take quite a while. while. Like... <sighs> at this point, moderate, it's a... Okay, moderate, Middle East, and oil don't go together. Well, okay, most of the stuff Other about Palestine and Israel isn't much about oil. But, yes, true. The thing is, is that there are actual moderate Israelis and moderate Palestinians, but they aren't oh, yeah. the ones that have voices. They do have yeah. their own political parties, but of course everyone rallies under the radical. Yeah. Because it's they have the money. voice and the means to get power. Which uh, in this I situation like... is extraordinarily unfortunate. Yeah. But of course, oh, um, inevitable. I, I looked up Israel-Palestine and I, I got... I... I promise I'm not mentioning football out of my own. Scotland free world this time. has a huge wildfire, by the way. Um, there were Muslim players on an Israeli team from Jerusalem, and that that team is literally like known and takes pride in the fact that they have the most racist fans. Jesus. In the Middle East, when it comes to football. Two Muslim players that got signed to the team got ran out. What? <laughs> so, uh, if you think the, and also, so if you think the Israelis are the only people that are, or if you think that 
you know, the Muslims are the only ones that are the extremists in the case of Israel-Palestine, you're dead wrong. Yep. It's like, let's just point to Gaza as well. Egypt and Israel are bombing the shit out of it. Hmm. When there are clearly civilians on the ground, but, you know. Also, everything happening in Myanmar. That's a whole thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't follow that one as closely. Tajikistan... I'm just gonna say, oh, like, God. for anyone saying, uh, oh man, these podcasts seem to be getting really depressing. Yeah, it's because we're talking about world news yeah. that is progressively getting more depressing. Um, there was a... I mean, yeah, it's a product yeah, depressing of the world or more chaotic, at least. There was a firefight in Tajikistan with the IS that left many dead. There was a apparently a now revealed Dutch airstrike in 2015 that killed about 70 civilians in Iraq. Um, the IS has confirmed that Baghdadi is dead, though, and has named a new leader. Hmm. So Abu Bakr al Baghdadi is dead, but someone else stepped into his place. Well, yeah. Did we really think that killing Baghdadi would just end ISIS? They'd no. be like, well, our leader's dead now. It's This isn't the Fire Nation from Avatar, they okay? They are extraordinarily oh. <laughs> set in, and they're extraordinarily ingrained. They're there. By the way, ISIS is still an active terror group, for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. They just don't have territory anymore. <laughs> Alex? Hmm. Did you see? <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Look at the general chat. <laughs> Look at the general chat. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Ooh, can we make a noise in England that's heard in France? <laughs> I. Uh huh. I've seen that video. I See, don't I, I want. Uh, yeah, no, I'm. I'm going back to the general host chat. <laughs> um, completely irrelevant, but relevant in every single way possible at the same time. So we're gonna review like, Pop like... Derek. I'm trying to read the thing. Stop, Jesus Christ. So, um, we're, we're Derek, me, Annabeth, uh, Adeline, and Luca. We went to Popeyes on Friday. Mm. Okay. And we got the Popeyes kind of spicy chicken sandwich. And we recorded it. Okay, can we address the fact that Adeline Okay, Adeline's the one with the How was it? long long hair in the in who plays like a string instrument, right? Yes. Um so that's okay. a lot of them. But okay, do you need They're a photo of her? Oh fuck the next watch. This mm, for some reason. Eric, why did you send I this thing so many times wrong... to general hosts? Guys, <laughs> can we let them speak? This is Adeline. So, for some reason, Adeline has been letting me call her Annabelle for like the past four fucking years, and she's never corrected me. <laughs> 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 so Hold on I've a second. On Hold on a second. For like four years now, and she's like, "Yeah, my name is not like Annabelle." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and she's like, "No, I find it cute. You're the only one that calls me that. It's like cool." I'm like, "Yeah, except I look like an idiot now." Can we get an F in chat for Natalie? <laughs> <laughs> on it. There you go. <laughs> Oh, F and yeah. chat. F and chat for fucking food. F. But yeah, so Derek and I... Are you gonna put a D for food? So Derek and I, we're, we're, we're doing a new series on YouTube. Self-plug, by the way, on the GFY podcast for Alex and Derek's food reviews, which I'm probably gonna end up calling Fast Food Fridays. <laughs> Because that sounds absolutely spectacular. Yeah, so we walked <laughs> through the cold because Derek's a fucking idiot. But 
Damn, was that sandwich worth it? I bought two of them. Also, Derek, also, like Derek, we made a fatal mistake, though, that we're going to have to record tomorrow or sometime this week. We never actually did the post-eating review. Don't. I only uh, have the video from when we were in the middle of eating it. That's an oof. Also, I ate a second one today. Oh. How'd that Wait. go? It, it was cold by there the time again. I got it. It was cold. <laughs> but, you know, thanks, Mom. It was good. It was very good. Wow. Do we have any other topics? Um... Uh, Mr. Beast. Did we just burn through all of them in under an hour, or has it already been an hour? It's been like an, <laughs> an hour, hour and ten minutes. Okay. Well, do we have any others? Uh, Mr. Beast trees. He's planting he's trees. Talking. For the sake of the earth. Yes. Probably. Have you guys heard that weird um, thing on YouTube about how Mr. Beast apparently mistreats his um, <laughs> like the people that edit his videos? Oh, yeah, but that I yeah. haven't heard about that. I kind of have a little bit. Well, like, it's, it's, not, it's not true. As much as I wanted it to be true, because I don't like Mr. Beast, like, it, it's not true. <laughs> He's just fine. I feel like a lot of the negative press is a lot, like, similar to the stuff that PewDiePie gets. Like, people... Yeah. Like, especially people that don't follow him, like, on an everyday basis, they only see the... The only stuff they see is the negative media reports about them, because the media only reports about him when they find old tea about him, or when something bad happens, or when yeah. something's taken out of context. You never hear about, oh, he's donating to charity, he's using his platform to, you know, uh, fight against, you know, hate, like, that shit. They only see the negative side of that. And like touching on YouTube, um, like this whole the whole KSI vs Logan Paul thing mm -hmm. is really really good for boxing because it's a dying sport. Like no, how long has it been since America has genuinely cared about a boxing fight? Unless if it Never. involves with um, Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> like, <laughs> the last the last boxing fight. The, the only reason Andy Ruiz and um. Anthony Joshua got so much attention, and it, for people without context, Anthony Joshua is a good boxer. Ruiz is a bad boxer. Ruiz won, so everyone was like shocked. Um, so, like that fight didn't get a lot of buys. Like people didn't watch it; they only cared after the result. KSI vs Logan Paul got like two million pay per view buys, I think. So. Two million people I tuned in to watch. I mean, going to be on. fair, who most likely wouldn't want to watch it? Because I mean, you got Logan Paul, like one of the Paul brothers, fighting against KSI, and like knowing the fact of what what Logan Paul has done also on YouTube as well. I bet people would be like, interested. Like, doesn't anyone want to punch Logan? Well, they're in both the face? not yeah. really great people, but at least KSI is a I'd vote for KSI. nice guy. Okay, KSI. Okay. KSI. KSI. KSI is uh, very rich. I, I so okay, Obvi okay, very obvious bias here because I'm a massive KSI slash like sideman British YouTuber fan. But like, yes, KSI is kind of a douchebag. <laughs> he that's kind of his like personality thing. And but he's still like a nice guy. He's like really humble, like outside of the camera. Logan Paul acts on camera how he acts off camera. <laughs> yeah. Like. If you watch, there's a video of, there's this, like, really interesting video of him after he lost the fight. He thought no one was recording in his locker room, but there was. And we saw how he was acting off the camera, and it was the exact same way. Like, <laughs> he was still the, like, braggadocious, like, attention-seeking asshole that he was. He appealed the decision for the fight, even though the reason he lost was he hit KSI in the back of the head, like, twice. Which is, by the way, illegal in boxing, mm -hmm. right? Grabbed his head and threw an uppercut. Then, so the whole sequence that got two points taken away from him was he grabbed the back of KSI's head, and then uppercutted him, and then when KSI fell down, punched him in the back of the head <laughs> while he was on the ground, which is an obvious disqualification. But the ref was really, really nice and took away two points instead, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was and Logan Paul still thinks nice. that he won. 
<laughs> like, so it it just goes to show, like, there's a reason people were rooting for KSI and not Logan Paul. Yeah, I didn't even know a second fight was gonna happen. Yeah, the first know, fight was like... amateur. The, like the first fight was an amateur fight with like head guards and stuff. This one was like no head guards, ten ounce professional boxing gloves and stuff. Didn't um the last fight they got a tie? Yeah, they tied. Yep, yeah, it they was did. really dumb. Which, by the way, it wasn't a tie. KSI won, but, like, they just wanted that extra... The refs wanted to give them that extra moolah, so they said, have a rematch. Here's a tie. Hmm. Gotta love it. But, hey, I, I mean, the world... Really happy. Happy. Uh, I'm actually happy that KSI was the one that won, because, like... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> imagine, imagine how, like, much more of an asshole he would have turned into if Logan Paul had won. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and, I don't know. Yeah, so for people without context, in boxing, it you, it's scored because obviously in not not every fight someone's going to get knocked out. So mm -hmm. in boxing there's a points system that the um there are judges and they give points to people each round based off of like aggression and control and superior boxing and stuff. And you get points taken away if you commit a foul that's bad enough. Like, normally the ref will just give you a warning, but if you do a really egregious foul, they'll take a point away. And if it's egregious enough, they disqualify you. As I said before, Logan Paul grabbed KSI's head and uppercutted him and then hit him while he was down, which is a disqualification. Mm -hmm. And the ref was very nice to him and took away two points. God damn it, sir. What's so... KSI, KSI won by split decision. Oh. Oh, it's oh, yeah, yeah, that's a KSI video from way earlier. <laughs> but, like, so KSI won a decision based off of points. If The reason Logan Paul mm -hmm. is really salty is because if he hadn't have uppercutted him and then hit him in the back of the head, he wouldn't have gotten two points taken away, and he would have won the fight 51 to 49. Mm -hmm. Committed that foul. Um, he made that foul, like, yeah, he didn't win because he committed that foul, and he's literally going back to the boxing commission and being like, like making an official legal claim to re like, um, reverse the decision of that fight and give it to him because he thinks he didn't commit a foul. You see, here my opinion <laughs> on this is that since um he's trying to to actually tell the commission that hey, I didn't make make any such like foul thing about um like um in order to lose the fight um i i feel like there should be a boxing guide on the rules on what to do and what not to do. otherwise uh you're gonna end up like him where he's gonna i'm pretty sure he's just gonna lose <laughs> yeah There's some kind of dispute about it like come on <laughs> this is why mma is safer than boxing you know, I like crazy weapons of this area. The ones made by South Belk Munitions Factory. Oh my god, stop quoting Ace Combat at random times. <laughs> North Osea Group oh my... is formerly known... Oh, okay, the... controversial opinion. Controversial opinion. Oh, there he goes. Derek, <laughs> Derek is actually a cryptid. Derek's Derek just a rock. He, like, he's just a pebble on the ground. Oh, Alex, uh, I, I believe Abby and I are What? What? Oh. He's back. <laughs> what, wait, what did you say? By the deep Check General, unknown. uh, because Adeline was asking if, um, if we needed her. I mean, if you want to listen in, sure, but, uh, we're winding down anyways. Yeah. Also, Derek, like, didn't you say you only had, like, 30 seconds? And you've been here, like, half the podcast. Yeah, um... Okay. <laughs> you pretty much lied about it. Oh, by the way, I know how to end this entire podcast in one second. Do it. <clears throat> if you bought Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on the Epic Store, you unlocked a skin in Fortnite so that you could become a Stormtrooper. Fortnite Stormtrooper oh, yeah. exists. 